yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday what all we have covered, let us revise once. So this was the topic that yesterday we were uh, taken up, isolated versus memory mapped I.O. So here in this, uh, we are talking about this, uh, yesterday, yesterday we have seen what is isolated means. In this isolated, here in the buses, we have seen here, we have the buses, this data and risk control, these are the I.O. bus. So, if these are I.O. bus. So here, the other side, we may be having memory bus, wherein this processor is uh, trying to communicate with the RAM and ROM, like that. So, how do we manage this I.O. bus? How do we manage the memory bus? So that was the topic yesterday we dealt with this I.O. bus and interface uh, modules. So here in this, uh, we able to, we, we have a means like uh, the, these are the three methods or three ways how this uh, computer buses are handed. So one is to use a separate bus, one for memory, the other for I.O. This yesterday we have seen. Any doubts about this? Uh, yes. If you have any doubts about that, uh, if no doubts, you please type in chat window no. Do you have any doubts about that yesterday's? No doubts, okay. So, okay, all right, all right. So, here, similarly, we have seen yesterday. Uh, this one, uh, use one common bus for both memory and I.O., but have separate control lines. And the other last one is, yesterday this also we have seen, uh, use one common bus for both memory and I.O., but separate control lines. I was, uh, yesterday I was telling you like, uh, uh, we have this uh, I.O. read and I.O. write control lines when we want to transfer to the I.O. devices, memory read and memory write control lines are there. These are the control signals or control lines for memory transfer. When processor wants to transfer here, when processor wants to transfer anything to the I.O. devices or if it wants to take anything from the I.O. devices, then the Control here the signals that are available are IO read or IO write depending upon the requirement here. So here the processor if it wants to communicate to the memory, then the control signals that are that comes here are memory read and memory write. So two separate control lines, whereas data line and address line will be common. So that is the second one, this second one. This second one is called isolated I.O. So that we have seen yesterday. So let us take up today this memory map I.O. So if you have any doubts, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask. Because again, I have to come out of this presentation mode, I mean, uh, this PPT, then I have to check the chat window there. It is a time-consuming process. So someone, if, uh, if someone having doubt, they can unmute themselves and talk. I will just count five times. You can unmute and you can talk. Five, four, three. To oh wow. okay, I guess no doubts. So let's continue with memory map IO. So this in, in this memory map IO, this is the third method. What is the third method? These are the methods we listed here. Use two separate buses, one for memory and the other for IO. This is method one. Use one common bus for both memory and IO, but have separate control lines for each. This is the second method. The third method is use one common bus for memory and I.O. with common control lines. So that is the third method. And this third method is also called memory mapped I.O. Memory mapped I.O. input output. 
So here what happens is the other alternative is to use the same address space. Address space is same for both memory and I.O. Let us say 0 to 64. This is one set. And 65 to 128. This is another set. So 0 to 64, we are, let us say, we are connecting it to memory. And 65 to 128, in this address space, let us say we are connecting it to I.O. So that is called separate address space, not same address space. Separate address space. That That is happening here in, uh, in earlier cases. That is before this memory map IO we have isolated and uh, the other one first method. In that case, separate address space. But in case of memory map, we have 0 to 64 only, this space only for connecting memory as well as IO device. So how is that processor is going to distinguish which is a memory and which, which are the I.O. devices in the given address space. That is what we are going to discuss in this memory map drive. So I repeat again, this memory map drive uses everything common, common bus and common control lines. So the other alternative is to use the same address space for both memory and I.O. This is the case in computers that employ only one set of read and write signals and do not distinguish between memory and I.O. addresses. Obviously, for this, is, this third, third uh, point is very for obvious reasons. Here, when we are having the same address space, obviously, the, uh, there is uh, no difference between memory and I.O. address. So, configuration is I O. So in this memory, the summary here is we are using the same address space that is 0 to 64 for memory as well as for I O devices. And also the same control signals for read and write. So the, it is the, the computer treats an interface register as being a part of the memory system. This interface register means you, you might be Knowing at this stage, you should be able to uh, recollect what is meant by uh, that interface register. This inside this interface, we have this circuit. This circuit. So this circuit is uh, having inside some decoder circuits, some re re registers. So that one here, we are talking here. Memory map I O. Here, the computer treats an interface register, that interface module earlier I have shown, as being part of the memory system. The assigned addresses for interface registers cannot be used for memory words, which reduces the memory address range available. So, in this, further if you continue, in a memory mapped I.O. organization, there are no specific input or output instructions instructions. In earlier case, we were having separate instructions. So those instructions when being decoded, they will generate I will read, I will write those sort of signals as an output or memory read or memory write like that. So for memory read, for memory write, separate instructions are required. For I will read, for I will uh, write, separate set of instructions are required in earlier case. But since here we are having common control signals, we don't need separate instructions. A common instruction is enough. So in a memory map or IO organization, there are no specific input or output instructions. So how is that it is going to handle in further discussion with the CPU? The CPU can manipulate IO data residing in interface registers with the same instructions that are used to manipulate memory words. This is again the same story here in this uh, uh, point, whatever we discussed, the same here. The CPU can manipulate IO data residing in interface registers 
with the same instruction that are used to manipulate memory verbs. Why? The reason is we have the common control line for read and for write. Earlier, come uh, separate control signals were uh, coming out, but here common control line is there. So this common control line is having, uh, for example, uh, let me uh, take the help of uh, this one, one minute. I'm just trying to graphically represent this one by drawing if I can. Just a moment, it is coming up. By the time this software comes, I think it can continue. The ink space uh, paint software uh, sort of. Okay, I don't know if it's taking time. Uh, we'll see the other alternative. Thing. Are you able to see? Can someone unmute and say what I'm drawing? Can you able to see? A box. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but able to see, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. That's great. So, say, let us say here is a zero, and here is a last one is a sixty-four. And what I, I do is. In this memory, this is a memory. So in this memory, uh, here till 31, here let us say 31. What I have planned is, at zero, I have planned to connect here uh, keyboard. Uh, at one, I have planned to connect a printer. I have planned to connect here uh, printer. So likewise, IO devices, what I am planning is, between 0 to 31, I am planning my I.O. devices. From 32, 32, through this last number 64, it's my memory space. I can uh, keep here inside my, inside the uh, computer, uh, you have this uh, uh, random access uh, memory. So, RAM. So this, inside this, uh, 32 to 64, I can keep anything inside this memory, uh, depending upon the, my computation, my program. Uh, suppose this program, very program, this uh, paint program, now it is consuming my memory, RAM. So what all I am doing here, it is going inside the RAM and it is uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, it is using that RAM now. So memory is used. So this way, what I am planning is, uh, now the control signals I can have here, uh, I'm trying to take uh, some other color. I don't know. I can pick uh, here, I think, uh, this color. OK. So is this visible, this color? I'm not, not clearly. Sir. Not clearly. OK. Uh, I'll, I'll do one thing. So now? Yes, sir. OK. So let us say this first one is a read, read control signal, read. Uh, OK. And the second, this one is a, let us say this is a right, uh, uh, right control signal. Yeah. So now, uh, these are the two control signals enough for the processor to uh, wait. Uh, OK. I am able to make space, some space here. So now the processor is here. So this processor now can use same uh, common bus. This is a common bus for address, for data, and for the control. So this controls 
last one, this one, this is a control. Let us say this is a control. Control line. So if this control line is going to uh, 0 to 31 space, then it is treated like for IO devices. When this control is going to 32 to 64, it is treated like a, it is for, ad we are addressing for a memory like that. Yes. Is that clear? Am I able to make the things clear here? What I am trying here in this uh, uh, slide here? Uh, if uh, one or two members can able to uh, unmute themselves and talk, it will be helpful for me. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. That's great. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, thank you so much. If, if some, uh, that, that's the thing here. That's the point here in the, uh, this, uh, if, if this is clear, if this is clear to you people, uh, then uh, we are able to uh, grab the point their memory map IO means. This is the memory map IO. This is the entire thing is a memory only here. If this memory partly used here 0 to 31 is used to connecting the IO devices. You know at this stage what IO devices we mean. And the 32 to 64 we are using as a RAM. So now the control signals that are coming out of the, this processor uh, when they are going to 0 to 31 space and along with that whatever the data that goes whatever the uh, address that goes actually the, uh, it is very much understood that we are actually meaning here IO device not the RAM when processor really tries to uh, uh, give the address for this space that is 32 to uh, address and data anything that is uh, given here 30, uh, given here that will be going to this 32 to 64 address space. So that's what uh, this memory mapped I.O. is uh, managing. This, this is how me memory mapped I.O. is managing managing with a common uh, uh, common uh, address, common data, and a common control lines. So the CPU can manipulate I.O. address residing in interface registers with the same instructions. That, that are used to manipulate memory words. Each interface is organized as a set of registers that respond to read and write requests in the normal address space. Sorry, your voice is breaking. My voice is breaking. Is it is it okay now? Yes, sir. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. So typically a segment of the total address space is reserved for an interface. Uh, I'll take the uh, but in general, they can be addressed as long as there is not a memory word that responds to the same address. I think this is this point is very clear to you. Typically, a segment of the total address space is reserved for interface registers. But in general, they can be located at any address as long as there is not a memory word that responds to the same address. This point again, I just want to go back here. Uh, oh, that is this paint. Here, this paint again. Uh, let us take uh, this time new. How to take new here? Um, I don't know where is that new man. Click on files and we also need that. On files, yes, thank you so much. So don't save this one. Okay. So now here, uh, this is say uh, this is the memory available, and I don't really need zero to uh, thirty one. I have to have I O only. There is no such a standard uh, compulsory rule that and thirty two to uh, this uh, let us say sixty four. I have to have uh, memory as a memory. So there is no such a standard rule. I can put here, uh, what I can do here is, uh, for example, uh, this way, let us take one more uh, different color. And uh, here, uh, I can put here, somewhere here, or uh, this address, suppose say this is uh, some 16. I can use this 16 as a memory. And uh, 30, uh, somewhere here, 40, let us take 40 address space. And this 40 as a IO. 
and uh, inside the processor i can tell the processor uh, here uh, this is address lines are there here this is a uh, address line first one or data second is the data then the control so if this control signal and this address control and address this two if it is set by the processor that at this address which address at, at this 16 uh, let me take the other address. at this 16 at this 16 what i have is not a io not a io it is a memory at this 16 i don't have io device it is a memory space like that if processor uh, to processor if we could able to say it through program then definitely the 16 is not for io device rather the 16 space is for memory only similarly earlier i was talking about 32 to 64 continuously for the ram but if you have planned to have io device at 40 then you can do so uh, at 40 you can connect a io io device only thing is in the program you have to tell that at the 40 space you don't have any memory rather it is a io device yeah my clear now about this yes someone can unmute because i i'm uh, i i'm uh, not going to chat window someone can unmute and tell yeah my clear about the, this this point i am trying to say typically a segment of the total address space is reserved for interface registers but in general they can be located at any address as long as there is not a memory word that responds to the same address is that this point uh, pictorially i uh, uh, represented to you people was that clear yes sir oh, okay okay that's great let us move to the uh, same memory map computers with memory map for io can use memory type instructions to access io data this is again the same earlier several times we discussed because there are, there are no separate control signals same control signals are used to access the memory as well as the io so it allows uh, the computer to use the same instructions for either uh, input output transfers or for memory transfers the advantage is that the load and store instructions used for reading and writing from the memory can be used to input and output data from io register this is again the same uh, all this uh, this point this point even this point is also talking the same thing because same control signals so same load instruction can be used to access the io registers also and the same load also uh, can be used to access the memory also similarly the same store also uh, can uh, we can go to the io devices with the same instruction and with the same instruction we can come to the memory also only thing is address that address is important where you have kept the io devices in uh, uh, where you have kept the uh, location for the memory that address is important earlier pictorially i have represented so with memory map at io all instructions that refer to memory are also available for io so again the, this this point is replicated differently here so with this we uh, conclude our uh, all this uh, uh, you know uh, there are three ways that computer buses can be used to communicate with memory and io this three this is for 10 marks sometimes sometimes for 7 marks definitely this this slides i have shared only this points if you remember and if that much if you write uh, that is enough to uh, bank to the 10 marks okay so Oh, those slides are, are shared very important okay so that completes our uh, discussion now coming to the next topic asynchronous data transfer so here this is before this asynchronous data transfer now uh, we go back here again to the paint here let us take the another okay so now here i have suppose say this is my uh, processor p and here i have my uh, io device suppose maybe a uh, keyboard maybe keyboard for example so now i am just typing uh, here with the help of uh, some uh, uh, you know this is a keyboard let us say keyboard this io device and this is a, let us uh, let us take this as a printer so 
this as a printer this i o as a uh, printer okay. so this is a printer so now i have given here something like uh, a, a b c d in a word file so this i am commanding uh, to uh, type uh, print get the print of this a b c d to the processor i have, i gave the command print command so now how is that this printer is knowing uh, in fact inside the computer what happens is for a for example let us uh, say 100011101 something for a for b uh, similar to that 1101011 maybe 00 i don't know these are just uh, for rough understand so for c again the same here so like that for example let us say are there but how is that printer is aware that oh these many bits i have to receive these many bits i have to receive uh for a and this a is a starting of the this uh, order the, and then b these very bits are for b and this is the second second letter in this sequence then c and like that how is the printer is aware there should be some mechanism between these two so that the, it understands really what we mean here so that is what Uh, this uh, uh, stroke hand shaking um, uh, uh, asynchronous serial transfer uh, all about and uh, moreover this has sent uh, this a is been uh, no let us say this all a b c d all been received by this but how is it processor whether if process still waiting whether whether printer uh, really has taken this a this Yeah, in that yes, A B C D been received. Like that, some acknowledgement should come. Then this processor can take some other decision whether to send another uh, paper for printing or not or some other work. Unless there is uh, this 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 uh, acknowledgement from the process uh, uh, printer, then this processor will not be knowing that this I was successfully received this A B C D. Or any other. So this is just example how the, these two devices are actually communicating with each other. That uh, this processor ha ha had sent something, and I O had received something, and both are telling each other that yes, you had sent something. Yes, I received something. So this is called acknowledgement. So this acknowledgement, how is that really happening? So this is happening with the help of some mechanism. that some mechanism is this stroke control mechanism hand shaking mechanism and this uh, asynchronous serial transfer mechanism so in this asynchronous data transfer we are basically going to discuss what is this stroke control is all about before that let us have this asynchronous data transfer introduction so the internal operations in a digital system are synchronized by means of clock pulses supplied by common pulse generator internal operations in a digital system so these are actually controlled by some clock pulse generator this clock pulses are applied to all registers within a unit and all data transfers among internal registers occur simultaneously during the occurrence of clock two units such as cpu and io interface earlier we took cpu uh, in a uh, in and software processor and a uh, uh, printer so this cpu and io interface are designed independently of each other so inside the unit means it's okay inside the unit all registers you may operate with a common clock but this is separate unit and this is separate unit how do you handle these two separate units that's the issue so if the registers in the interface share common clock with the cpu registers the transfer between the two units is said to be synchronous if they are using common clock 
the way you said internal operations in a digital system synchronized by means of clock pulse, then that is called synchronous system. In most cases, internal timing in each unit is independent from other, in that each uses its own private clock. If two units are operating at different clock speeds, then obviously they have to have private clocks, own clocks, individual clocks. So in that case, two units are said to be asynchronous, asynchronous to each other. This approach is widely used in most computer systems. This is self-explanatory, what is meant by asynchronous means. Asynchronous means all these one, two, three, four, five, six in, in one, one statement. If we use common clock, then it is asynchronous. If we use different clocks, asynchronous. That's it. But examination point of view, all these points you have to put. What is asynchronous data transfer means? All these points you have to put. So, a synchronous data transfer between two independent units requires that control signals be transmitted between the communicating units to indicate that to indicate the time at which data is being transmitted. This is where this uh, strobe and uh, handshaking are coming into the picture. Suppose, say, if you have this one, uh, you have this. Uh, You have the processor, suppose. In this processor, you have a different set of, uh, here you have ALU, your arithmetic logic unit. Inside the arithmetic logic unit itself, we have one is the arithmetic unit A, and the other is the logical unit. All right. Apart from this ALU, we also have the control unit inside. So all these are actually having inside a lot of circuitry. So the inside, uh, the, these are having a lot of circuitry. So these circuits, inside circuitry, may be having some uh, flip-flops also. So these flip-flops, if are connected to a common clock, common clock, so then we call it is a uh, synchronous. Suppose say you have one uh, uh, processor here, and uh, the other is here, you have some uh, IO device, printer. So now, the clock that this processor is operating at is different clock, and the hardware here is operating at uh, is a different clock. So this clock is, let us say, uh, CK1, uh, and this is, uh, let us say, CK2. Uh, Obviously, CK1 will be greater than CK2. Operating frequency of the processor is much faster, much higher than your printer. So, two different clocks, asynchronous. But though asynchronous, we still able to transmit something from the processor to the printer flawlessly without any problem. And printer should be able to communicate to the processor as well. That paper is not there, that ink is not there, such communication. So this communication happens flawlessly with the help of asynchronous transmission. But how? Because this is operating a different clock, this is operating a different clock. That is where uh, this this mechanism, your strobe, is coming into the picture. This strobe here, one way of achieving this is by means of a strobe pulse supplied by one of the units to indicate the other unit when the transfer has to occur. This is one way. The other way is handshaking method. Another method commonly used is to accompany each data item being transferred with a control signal. Along with the data, you also have, have to have control signal that indicates the presence of data in the bus. The unit receiving the data item responds with another control signal, two control signals. One control signal is from the transmission, the other control signal is from the receiver. This receiver is using this control signal to acknowledge receipt of the data. This type of agreement between two independent units 
is referred to as handshaking. So let us see straw with the pictures here. This is called source unit, a transmission unit. This is our destination unit. We call this sort of setup here. In this, uh, if you see here, arrow mark here. Arrow mark is shown here. It is uh, source to destination. This is arrow. I don't know how many of you can able to view it, but I am pointing my, uh, you know, mouse pointer here. Here, you see here, there is a pointer, which is pointing from source to destination. Towards destination, it is pointing towards destination. And the strobe here, there is the arrow. Even this arrow is pointed towards the destination. These two arrows are pointed towards the destination. And this is strobe signal. This strobe is originated from the source. We call it as a source initiated strobe. Source initiated strobe. Why? Source has initiated this communication. That's why source initiated strobe for data transfer. So in, this is the block diagram, uh, this one. And this one is a timing diagram. This, this you see, is a timing diagram. In this, as long this strobe is high, your data is valid. But you see here, th there is a, some gap here. This gap, I will tell now why it is. Here also, there is a gap. Those, as long as strobe is high, then only your data is treated as valid. If your strobe is not high, then the data is not treated as a value. So that's the idea here. Uh, I just go back to the paint. So you have here one source here and one destination here. You are transmitting data from source to destination. This data is treated as a valid by the destination unit only when strobe signal is high. And this strobe is actually, you see this strobe signal arrow mark is towards the destination. That's why it is called source initiated strobe. So here, the timing I was talking about the so figure B shown. This is your data. And this is your uh, this thing, uh, strobe. So if your strobe is high, then data is valid. But I was telling you about this gap here. You, you see this gap here. Even before strobe is becoming uh, high, your data is made available. Even after slow, strobe has gone low, but your data is still held as a high. Uh, your data is made available. So this is because of hardware circuitry. You might have studied setup time hold time if you are if you are not aware uh, with the setup time and hold time no issues with that but at this point what you have to understand is even before this uh, strobe signal comes even before strobe signal becomes high high here you you should have data stability that's why even before time we make it available that is the point and here even after strobe going down here at this point but we have to still maintain that data for some time. So this time is called setup time, and the other one is called hold time. That is for reliable operation of the devices, that uh, your flip-flops, latches. So uh, for that, we have to have this mechanism. Uh, but uh, uh, further details, if you are not aware, no issues with that at this point. Just I'm telling why this is this gap is the my my, my main uh, idea here is uh, concern is why this gap is here. So somebody may think that uh, so since the uh, said that uh, our uh, this uh, strobe uh, as long strobe is high da uh, data should be there. So someone may take in this sense. So with that uh, sense, they may uh, think uh, this sort of data representation is uh, wrong. 
So that's why I'm clarifying. This sort of data representation, this gap here, data made available even before your strobe, this, this strobe, this strobe signal is high. This gap is required. Hope this is clear. Uh, uh, can someone uh, unmute and uh, speak? Is that clear? Yes, no one. No one responding. Are there any people? Clear, sir. OK, thank you. So let us move to this uh, another. This is destination initiated stroke. Here, if you see the arrow mark, this is coming from the destination. If you see the stroke arrow, this coming from the destination and going towards the source. That's why it is called destination initiated stroke. And data is transferred from the source. So when stroke comes to the uh, source unit, from the destination unit, it thinks that source thinks that destination is actually in want of some data. That's why it starts transmitting. So strobe initiate uh, this is this is called destination initiated strobe for data transfer. So again, uh, uh, this this bit bit uh, let us quickly clarify this once source initiated strobe and destination destination initiated strobe. Here, in a source-initiated stroke, a stroke signal is originated from the source unit and it is going to the destination. And in a uh, destination-initiated stroke, destination unit, receiving unit, will be initializing the stroke. So that is the difference. Now coming to the another method that is called handshaking method. In this handshaking method, if you see the picture here, that will be a lot clearer. So uh, data. Uh, this is uh, here in handshaking also we have source initiated handshaking and uh, data initiated handshaking so let us see first source initiated ha ha handshaking in this source initiated handshaking you see the source unit is sending a data valid data valid signal and the arrow is towards the destination as long as data valid is there the data that is available on the data bus is also valid. So once this destination unit receives the complete data that is there on the data bus, which is generated by the source unit, okay, then this destination unit will acknowledge by sending a data accepted signal. That's why this data accepted signal arrow mark is towards the source. So, Coming to this, uh, uh, what we call this uh, timing diagram, that is self-explanatory. You please uh, go through this. If you have any problems, you can ask me in the next day. We'll be having next session. At that time, you can ask. Because anyway, I am uh, just uh, revising the past covered for five minutes. So during that five minutes, you can ask the doubts. Meanwhile, you just refer this timing diagram. Okay? So coming to this source-initiated handshaking, sequence of events, how they are occurring. That is important. You have the source unit. You have the destination unit. Source unit plays data on bus. It is doing this job first. What it is doing, source unit? Plays data on bus. Enable data value. This is the job. If you see this picture also like that. Data bus and data value. These arrow marks, if you see, these are originated from the source. So that is what in the uh, sequence of events we are uh, writing here. Place data on bus, enable data value. So this is what generated from the source unit. Where it should where it should go, it should be going to the destination unit. So that's why the arrow here in the sequence of events is shown from here to here. So what it is doing this destination unit accept data from bus and enable data accepted signal. So once this destination unit accepts the data that is there on the bus, then it has to enable data accepted signal after that what it has to do it should go to the source unit this this data accepted should go to the source unit that's why this arrow is shown like this is going to the, the source side there what it is doing <coughs> disable data valid then it does this job it disables the data valid signal this data valid signal is disabled only when this source unit receives data accepted signal from the destination. 
so the disabled data valid so in during that the meaning of that data valid uh, uh, it is disabling the data valid means the data available on the bus is invalid that is the point so when it is happening what is that really is here uh, doing here on the destination side this is the meaning of that disabled data accepted since since this once data accepted been received from the destination by the source unit source unit is disabling this data valid this data valid is disabled now this destination should again disable this data accepted disable data accepted it it indicates ready to accept data it meaning it is actually destination unit is going to the initial state initial state initial state here there is no data accepted here signal is it's not coming out here unless it is it, it it receives not any data valid and any data from the source unit destination unit is not going to put anything on the data accepted line here so meaning initially data accepted signal is not available initially it 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 comes only when this data valid is coming to the destination unit and this destination unit receives the data from the data bus and then to acknowledge only this data accepted is kept once this data accepted is kept here this source unit having received this data accepted it disables the data valid signal means it invalidates this it since it has invalidated again it may send no again if it is sending means it should be able to send the data accepted again right that's why it, it disable itself uh, destination also disables data accepted that is what happens so and then it, the initial again it goes to the source unit so this sequence of events this diagram this arrow marks how the, the flow is that is important examination point of view again 10 marks remember this uh, stroke uh, and this hand shaking definitely a very important examination now coming to this uh, destination uh, initiated hand shaking so based on this based on this source initiated hand shaking i request everyone to please go through the slides already i have uh, kept on student resources so i am just wrapping my session with this i am not going to discuss this uh, destination initiated handshaking i request you people you please go through the slides already shared if you have any doubts ask me on whatsapp or uh, tomorrow when we again start the session initial 5 uh, minutes will be for uh, revising the things so at that time you can ask this uh, destination initiated after this uh, destination initiated finally we will have the asynchronous transfer that we will see next session so uh, mean uh, what i do is i just want to uh, go to this uh, stop recording let me